Thank you. When I came into office, I promised to look at the world's challenges with open eyes and very fresh thinking. We cannot solve our problems by making the same failed assumptions and repeating the same failed strategies of the past. All challenges demand new approaches. My announcement today marks the beginning of a new approach to conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. In 1995, Congress adopted the Jerusalem Embassy Act, urging the federal government to relocate the American Embassy to Jerusalem and to recognize that that city, and so importantly, is Israel's capital. This act passed Congress by an overwhelming bipartisan majority and was reaffirmed by unanimous vote of the Senate only six months ago. Yet for over 20 years, every previous American president has exercised the law's waiver, refusing to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem or to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital city. Presidents issued these waivers under the belief that delaying the recognition of Jerusalem would advance the cause of peace. Some say they lacked courage, but they made their best judgments based on facts as they understood them at the time. God said in Zechariah 12 that Jerusalem would be a burdensome stone. Well, that was clear this week. Welcome to the BibleInTheNews.com. This is John Billington with you. With weeks like this, we ask, how long, O oh Lord? Well, what made Trump's statement so significant and so highly controversial is that Trump simply said Jerusalem and specifically did not define the capital as West Jerusalem. Because even Russia earlier this year declared West Jerusalem the capital of Israel. But defining West Jerusalem the capital, it is equally declaring East Jerusalem as not being the capital. And that narrative is certainly not new. For anyone who is not familiar with the difference, it's East Jerusalem as it is known today that contains ancient Jerusalem, meaning the city of David, the Temple Mount, and, let's be honest, really all the places that hold uh, significance. It was Nikki Haley, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., who spoke uh, in detail in regard to this. It was on an interview on CNN with uh, Wolf Blitzer. Uh, the following is from that interview. Some members of the United Nations Security Council are now calling for an urgent meeting to address President Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Joining us now, the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley. Ambassador, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Wolf. So why make this announcement today? Well, this has been 22 years in the making. If you go back and see that Congress actually passed the Jerusalem Embassy Act back in 1995, um, both parties, both sides of the aisle have come together. This is something that unites our country and the fact that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. No one doubts that. Their, their parliament's there, their Supreme Court's there, their prime minister is there. And the United States has always put embassies in the capital. And so if you look at that, this is just common sense. This is just reality. What has happened in the past is every time presidents wanted to do this move, because um, every single pres leading presidential candidate has always said they're for moving the embassy. But every time that was presented to them, you had a lot of naysayers saying why it shouldn't happen. And they all said that it was gonna hurt the peace process. Well, in 22 years, we haven't seen a peace process. Maybe if we do something different, we will now start to see something move forward. And so I think that's what the president did is he showed courage, but more than that, right. he showed a commitment towards a peace uh, process to go forward. Does the Trump administration now consider Ambassador East Jerusalem as part of Israel? If you notice, we didn't say anything about any part of Jerusalem. That's for the two sides to decide. That's not for the United States to decide. All we said was Jerusalem as a whole. In the peace process, however they decide 
to break it up or not break it up or decide east and west, that's between the two parties. And we're going to let them do that. And we're going to support them in that process. Well, specifically, does the Trump administration now consider the old city of Jerusalem uh, part of Israel? You know what they've said is Jerusalem is the capital. We are not going to weigh in anymore on that out of our commitment for the peace process. We don't want to pick a side on this. What we want to say is it is time for the sake of Israeli children and Palestinian children. It is time for those two sides to come together. It's time for them to negotiate. And the United States is pushing that process. They get to decide the details. It's not for us to decide. Well, if the U.S. moves the embassy to Jerusalem, I assume it'll be West Jerusalem. Does the U.S. government now differentiate between West and East Jerusalem? You know, you're making an assumption on where it's going to go, and we just started that relocation process. So that's not something that we need to talk about. What we are talking about is the fact that this is a great way of moving things forward. For 22 years, we've seen everything be stale. The president finally said, let's get it done. And it's one more um, promise to the American public that he said he was going to do. Six months ago, the Senate overwhelmingly on both sides said they wanted him to do it, and he's following through on the will of the American people. And I think that everyone will respect that. They understand that the United States is going to put their embassy in the capital. Why should Israel be any different than any other country in the world? And so that's what we did today. This is just a reality check. This is nothing that anybody didn't already know. This unwillingness to say that the path to peace must be through the two-state solution is truly a new era in the seemingly never-ending peace process. Further to that, the complete unwillingness of the United States to now compromise the safety of Israel or force anything upon them seems so foreign after the Obama years. In fact, many see this as a perfect response to the Obama administration's abstention of UN Resolution 2334, which denied Israel any right to the City of David, the Western Wall, or the Temple Mount. And with so much Jerusalem in the news, the Bible is also very much in the news, as the two are so very closely linked. And the following was a message of thanks from Benjamin Netanyahu to President Trump. This is a historic day. Jerusalem has been the capital of the Jewish people for 3,000 years. It's been the capital of Israel for nearly 70 years. It was here that our temple stood, our kings ruled, our prophets preached. Jerusalem has been the focus of our hopes, our dreams, our prayers for three millennia. From every corner of the earth, our people yearn to return to Jerusalem, to touch its golden stones, to walk its hallowed streets. So it's rare to be able to speak of new and genuine milestones in the glorious history of this city. Yet today's pronouncement by President Trump is such an occasion. We're profoundly grateful for the President for his courageous and just decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and to prepare for the opening of the U.S. Embassy here. This decision reflects the President's commitment to an ancient but enduring truth, to fulfilling his promises and to advancing peace. The President's decision is an important step towards peace. For there is no peace that doesn't include Jerusalem as the capital of the State of Israel. I call on all countries that seek peace to join the United States in recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital and to move their embassies here. I share President Trump's commitment to advancing peace between Israel and all of our neighbors, including the Palestinians. This has been our goal from Israel's first day. And we will continue to work with the President and his team to make that dream of peace come true. I also want to make clear, there will be no change whatsoever to the status quo at the holy sites. Israel will always ensure freedom of worship for Jews, Christians, and Muslims alike. President Trump, thank you for today's historic decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. The Jewish people and the Jewish state will be forever grateful. As you can see, this is certainly bringing the Bible into the news in a very literal way. In fact, it's like a red rag to a bull for those that hate Israel. And first in line would be the Vatican.
as they have always been against the Jews, even being in the land. Even before 1967, they were against it. Before 1948, they were against it. So certainly, the Jews being in control of Jerusalem is close to intolerable. And thus the relationship they have developed with the Palestinians uh, since, since the beginning. Uh, and the reason for this is simple. They believe that the Jews replaced, uh, the, sorry, they themselves replaced the Jews as God's chosen people. And this is what uh, Chaim Weizmann was, was coming into, was the, this, this, uh, this force that he was dealing with when he came up against the Vatican. And this was, uh, he, the following quote is from when he was trying to get the mandate passed in the UN. And he says, if the mandate does not go through at this time, it never will. The Catholics have been chiefly responsible for uniting the Muslims and the Christians against us. And note that, that is, that's never changed. Because what the Vatican really wishes to have is something which amounts to power in Palestine. And it has been using various Catholic members of the League, such as Spain, Brazil, Italy, Belgium, and France, in order to achieve its object. And this is really the inner meaning of its attacks against us. Let that soak in, and you'll find, as I say, it's just the same today. And the following headlines show where the Roman Church and the Anglican and Orthodox Church's uh, perspective is. This is from the Times of Israel. Heads of Jerusalem churches deliver last-minute plea to Trump. From the LA Times, Heads of Christian churches in Jerusalem urge retaining city's international status. From the uh, L'Observatore Romano, Trump inflames the Middle East. Uh, from the Vatican Radio, Archbishop Tomasi urges U.S. to rethink on Jerusalem as Israel's capital. The American Jesuit Review, Pope Francis warns of new tension if U.S. Embassy is moved to Jerusalem. That one almost sounds like a threat. Uh, Al Jazeera, Egypt, Coptic Pope cancels Pence meeting over Jerusalem. Sunday Express, Trump's Jerusalem decision will cause an explosion in Arab states, Christian leader warns. Uh, Middle East Monitor, South African churches call for mass prayer in protest at Israeli violations. Uh, this is the Armenian News. Armenian church leaders condemn Trump's Jerusalem recognition. Um, the Daily Mail, which has a long title, but uh, it sums it up. The U.S. has crossed all red lines, head of Egypt's Coptic Church and Palestinian President will shun Mike Pence when he visits the Middle East in response to Trump declaring Jerusalem Israel's capital. The Times of Israel. Greek patriarch lobby, lobbies Vladimir Putin over Jerusalem lease deal fears. And it was the Roman Pope himself that spoke the following words this last week. He said, My thoughts go to Jerusalem, and I cannot keep silent my deep concern for the situation that has been created the past days. At the same time, I would like to make a heartfelt appeal for everyone's commitment to respect the city's status quo in conformity with the pertinent UN, uh, UN resolutions. And this end, end quote from him. So you can see all the churches really are so viciously opposed to Israel making these changes. But this, uh, from the Pope, this call for the desire to keep the status quo is incredibly hypocritical. Because the status quo has Israel, is in, uh, Israel in control, as it is today. Is that what the Church wants? Of course not. In fact, it was only this past July when the Pope called for a change in the status quo. The following is from Crux Now, a Catholic news site. Uh, quote, In the wake of a crisis surrounding the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, the Vatican on Tuesday told the United Nations Security Council it supported a, quote, comprehensive, just, and lasting solution to the question of the city of Jerusalem. During the Security Council meeting, Monsignor Simon Casis, the charge de affairs of the Vatican's mission to the United Nations, said, The Vatican 
the Vatican said Jerusalem needed an internationally guaranteed special status. They do not want Jerusalem to be under the control of Israel and the Jews. They want an internationally guaranteed special status. But if they're not getting that, then they want the status quo. They certainly don't want it to go further into the favor of Israel, which is exactly what Trump did this week. Well, it's no surprise then that when Mahmoud Abbas, the leader of the Palestinians, wants to get uh, last-minute help, he turned to none other than the Vatican and the Russians. The headline in the Jerusalem Post on December 5th this week was, quote, Abbas urges Putin, Pope, to intervene ahead of Trump decision. Uh, that, that article headline to me is unbelievable. That is... That has so many uh, links to Ezekiel 38. I mean, look who is uh, the one to turn to, uh, to get it changed, the change in Israel he was hoping, uh, Abbas, uh, Putin, and the Pope together. There it is. And really, this is one of the most notable changes that has been happening rather quickly since Trump has come to power. The realigning, or further aligning and uh, entrenching uh, of these uh, the nations right along the lines of Ezekiel 38. And sometimes Trump is going faster than Britain and the other young lions are quite ready for. Uh, and I believe that's really what the case here is with Jerusalem. I know the Prime Minister May came out against it, and, uh, and Canada has been against it as well. But in Europe, Trump is just more than they can take. In the German newspaper uh, Deutsche Welle, it was reported that the German Foreign Minister Sigmar Gabriel said, quote, the U.S. no longer sees the world as a global community, but as a fighting arena where everyone has to seek their own advantage. Germany can no longer simply react to U.S. policy, but must establish its own position. Even after Trump leaves the White House, relations with the U.S. will never be the same. He continued that, quote, Washington's role as a protector of Europe's security and economic interests set out by George C. Marshall 70 years ago, has began to crumble. Wow. And we could add so much more to these comments about the Northern Confederacy. And, of course, in time, we expect Russia to be the protectorate of Europe, and that comes from Ezekiel 38. Uh, and, of course, Rosh is where we uh, trace us to uh, Russia, but it is um, at the end of verse 7 where... Russia is said to be a guard unto them, those other nations that are mentioned at the beginning of Ezekiel 38, which I know we've mentioned on this program a number of times. But it's, uh, it is, Ezekiel 38 is such a relevant uh, prophecy for this. So there's so much more that we could say, but um, it is in fact now the case that the Germans see their country's relationship with Washington as actually a larger foreign policy challenge than the threat posed by North Korea or Iran. And that's according to a survey commissioned by the Kober Foundation in uh, last October. And that, I mean, Washington is a bigger problem than North Korea or Iran. Well, the bottom line is that Trump, without the move on Jerusalem, was moving away from Europe. Add Jerusalem, the Jerusalem Declaration this week, and the differences could not be more clear. Now, as far as Bible prophecy is concerned, and the plan that Almighty God has laid out, does it really matter if the U.S. recognizes Jerusalem as Israel's capital, or anyone else for that matter? In and of itself, no, not really. But that recognition shows a new path being taken from the U.S. And although many, including the mainstream media, mock this uh, possibility to contribute uh, to contribute peace, or being contributed contributing to peace, we know that peace has to come. The picture in Ezekiel 38 of the Northern Confederacy coming down on the land is in verse 11, the land of unwalled villages. They're dwelling safely, all of them, without bars, uh, sorry, without walls, having neither bars nor gates. That's again from Ezekiel 38. This 
peace that is found uh, in Ezekiel 38 has still to come about. And this situation was never going to come about by removing Jews from Jerusalem and the mountains of Israel, the West Bank. The two-state solution was a non-starter, guaranteed. Every time someone brought it up, moving right along, it was going to come to nothing. And so for Israel, having the largest power in the world today, recognized the hotly contested city, Jerusalem, as belonging to them, certainly lays the groundwork for a feeling of stability and removes much of the pressure to even think about dividing it once again, which is exactly what we would expect uh, prophetically. And as far as the peace plan goes, the U.S. administration have left most in the dark as to what their plan is. And this has left many in the media saying that the peace plan is a non-starter. And as far as the announcement concerning Jerusalem goes, it's supposedly spitting in the face of the Arabs, and especially the Saudis. With all the meetings that have been happening lately between Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law, and one of the, he's one of the leaders of the peace negotiations, I guarantee there is no chance the Saudis did not know this was, uh, this was coming. In fact, uh, my sister Angela Barnes, just as I was putting this together uh, last night, I, the email dinged and in came an article she had sent me uh, from the Times of India. And it was in the, the, the title was, the headline, Jerusalem as Israel's Capital, Saudi Arabia Seen On Board With U.S. Peace Efforts. The article says just the same, the Saudis had to know. And there's also been, I haven't got this in the text uh, section of Bible the News, but there's also an article, uh, there was also uh, a leak that was supposedly the plan of the Saudis, which included uh, the Palestinians giving up the um, uh, their claims to Jerusalem. Now, actually, and whether that plan is true or not, I don't know. Many are suspect that it is true, and it makes, it would be, I mean, prophetically, it would make a lot of sense, and peace would possibly uh, come a lot faster than we would expect if that's the case. Regardless, looking into something, this is, we're going off on a tangent on Bible News, which you are not supposed to do, we should keep this tight, but you know, I, we're going to put this in. I learned something very new this week, look into these events, and that is the fact that Jerusalem is not mentioned even once in the Koran by name. Can you believe that? This is supposed to be the third holiest site of Islam, and it's not even mentioned. The closest that you get is a reference once to the, quote, farthest place or mosque. But there was not always even a universal agreement to what that phrase even referred to. It does seem that the Muslims are fairly sure today that the passage refers to Jerusalem. That, that we know. But that would be the only direct, even if that referred to Jerusalem, even if it did, that would be the only mention of Jerusalem in the Quran which it is not even a mention. This actually blew my mind. And if you contrast that by the way the, the Bible speaks of Jerusalem, do you know that in the Bible, it's over 750 references we have to Jerusalem, by name Jerusalem. That's just type in Jerusalem, you got over 750 passages to look up. That does not include any of the references to Mount Zion, Mount Moriah, or names such as Salem. Now, it's also worth noting that the Quran does mention the return of the Jews. And I was I actually found this out. We had a Bible exhibition uh, that we went, that we met some Palestinians at. And they actually let us know. And it again, I was floored on this one. But I, I looked this up and it's tr it is true. Uh, there's a quote from the Quran. It says, when the promise of the hereafter, which they believe is the end days, comes to be fulfilled, we shall assemble you, we, meaning Allah apparently, we shall assemble you all together in the, uh, all together. And they look at that as, in the context, I guess, of you, the meaning the Israelites, all together in the land of Israel. Um, and even from a uh, uh, Muslim himself, he said, yeah, we believe the Jews are going to come back, or and would be back. And in fact, I looked this up on some other sites, Muslim sites, and they were saying it's even a prophecy fulfilled. It's sometimes I, I'm left almost speechless. It's, it's funny things. Anyway, you chew on that. Truly amazing. Um, 
no mention of Jerusalem, but there is a mention uh, they see that the Jews are going to go back uh, in the end times. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Regardless, what we do know from Ezekiel 38 is that Tarshish, which is today Britain, and her young lions, which includes the United States, Australia, and Canada, are on the same side with uh, Sheba and Dedan which today would be Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states. We've looked at this many times. If you want to look it up further, you can go to the Bible magazine. And there's a special, uh, the, if you go into the archives, there's a special issue that was dedicated directly to Tarshish. So you can look up lots there. Uh, opposing, uh, so this, this, this southern alliance would oppose the northern alliance of Europe and Russia, which we've mentioned from Ezekiel 38. And... This has been happening also on a quickened rate since Trump came to the presidency and reversed the path of Obama, who was trying to work with Iran at the expense of Israel and Saudi Arabia. Now, we've talked about Jared Kushner and visiting uh, Israel and Saudi Arabia a number of times, uh, and there is known to be a fairly robust relationship behind the scenes. And it was actually reported that the Saudi crown prince covertly visited Israel in September. Of course, both have the common enemy in Iran that is going to be concern number one on the agenda. So where things are going to go from here remains to be seen. But one thing seems sure. The U.S. administration apparently heard the message of Jeremiah 31 verse 10, which says, Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him, and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. And we will end with the words of Mike Pence at the celebration and reenactment of the 1917 UN partition vote on Palestine. Yes, they did have a reenactment of it, and yes, Mike Pence did attend and give a speech. And when you hear these words, it's no surprise why the Vatican and Christian churches are so bothered by the actions of the U.S., because I don't think there's ever been an administration or government anywhere in the world certainly not in the last 2,000 years, that was so overtly pro-Jewish and pro-Israel and would mention the prophecies and would mention uh, God's work with them. So here's Mike Pence's uh, a section, a small section out of that speech. While Israel was built by human hands, it's impossible not to see the hand of heaven leading its people, writing their history in the restoration of this ancient people to their land of their birth. In fact, the God of Abraham told his people, and I quote, even if you've been banished to the most distant land under the heavens, from there I will gather you and bring you back to the land which your fathers possessed. It was an ancient promise cherished by Americans since before our nation's founding. And it was a promise the Jewish people clung to through all the ages, through a 2,000 year exile, the longest of any people anywhere. So may we as Bible believers let Jerusalem come into our minds and pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for they shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Join us again next week on BibleInTheNews.com for another edition. Take care.